All right, well, welcome, folks, to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, and I'm excited to be in Munich, Germany, with a special guest. I have here Carmenia's one and only Chris <laughs> Carastoni here. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for allowing me into your home. Thank you very much for having me invited to this. Oh, man, I'm super excited that we can hook up. I followed your, your show on YouTube, and uh, you and I were part of a conversation from another EV gentleman a few months ago, and that's kind of how we, we hooked up originally. And I've been following you, and I thought, you know, I'm going to Germany. I'm doing a couple of European countries. Let me see if I can reach out to Chris and, and have you as my co-host for the next show. So I'm excited that you could do that. Thank you very much. Me too. So thrilled to have you here. So as usual, folks, you're going to have my regular topic of different kind of news stories that we follow here or that I follow on the EV Revolution show, and we'll keep it candid, and Chris will provide his excellent comments about what he knows from an EV perspective. He actually is a Nissan LEAF owner, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I've been got four a, months now. Four months. He's got a beautiful white uh, Nissan LEAF Tecna, if I got that right. Your SL model. for the SL. American and Canadian market, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So let's start off. Uh, again, thank you for having me here. Let's start off with... I think, you know, it's been an amazing year from an uh, electric vehicle sales perspective. And I'm sure that you've seen some of the stats that are out there. And I keep talking about that hockey stick of momentum that's happening in the EV sales. But, you know, certainly the sales are as high as, as they've ever been from an electric vehicle perspective. And these are global numbers. We get a lot of numbers about just the U.S., but I, I always want to bring it to a global perspective because that's where change needs to happen, right? Right, right around the world. Definitely. Now, it's no surprise that the Model 3 is leading the charge and, and all the pun intended there. But in, in August, there were over 172,000 um, plug-in cars. So these are both full battery only and hybrid or plug-in uh, hybrid electric vehicles, which is an astounding 76% increase um, from a year ago. I mean, that's just, we're really seeing this rocket ship of momentum take off. Um, now, the number one car, that puts it actually to uh, almost 1.1 million for year-to-date sales for electric cars from a global perspective, up almost 70%, and that's a 1.7% market share. Now, uh, you may know, Chris, that about a year ago, we were only seeing less than 1% market share. Is yeah. that w what you're understanding from an EV perspective? Yeah, yeah. I could confirm that, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So there's and a lot, lot happening there. A lot happening here. and. Uh, of course, Tesla Model 3, now that they're, they're churning these things out of the factories uh, as fast as they can, was the number one selling electric vehicle within that time period. So certainly for, uh, for the, the month, it was 18,000, over 18,000, and for a combined year to date is just under 60,000 units. So it's not the 10,000 a week that Tesla said that they were going to do, <laughs> it's but it's getting up there. Um, what are your thoughts? Are you starting? I mean... Uh, you know, people know that uh, when I drive around, I'm seeing electric cars all over the place. How is it here in Germany? <laughs> it would be a lie to say <laughs> to say so. Yeah. Um, the thing is, um, Germany doesn't have a network compared to, right. let me say, Norway, for mm -hmm. example. That's the main issue. Okay. Um, people are not being so much confronted with the e-mobility. As we have in Germany, many car manufacturers and the car lobby, just like BMW, Mercedes, Porsche, uh, Volkswagen, Audi. And um, I think Germany also missed the train of getting into this e-mobility segment. That's the main problem. And the other problem is that people are asking me when they see me driving the Leaf and asking me, hey, you changed really from BMW M model to Nissan Leaf, 400 horsepower to 150 wow. One extreme engine to the next. sound to, to low engine sound. Mm -hmm. And how can you charge that? I mean, there is no chargers anywhere. And that's not the truth. So if you've got these charging apps where you can check out the chargers, if you drive an EV, you know where to charge. And there are plenty of them, even in Munich. But this just proves that the people don't uh, really go in into that thing with open eyes because uh, they don't even see these chargers. We've got so many combustion engine drivers parking in front of the chargers uh, because they don't even know what this is. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. And that proves that the network hasn't got filled up that much so that everyone knows about it. Even people who are not so much into EV cars one day we'll know, but now we haven't got so far in Germany. So Germany, surprisingly, is far behind it. And um, I'm charging here, sometimes here's a supermarket about 800 meters away, and mm. they've got a free solar-supported mm. charger, yes. 20 kilowatts, yep. yeah, it's a DC mm -hmm. charger. Nice. 
and um, it's only one charger, so sometimes I'm a bit pissed, <laughs> if I can say it like that, because <laughs> sure. any time when I go there, yeah. uh, is a Renault Zoe or a BMW i3 or mm -hmm. some kind of plug-in car in front of it, mm -hmm. but it's just because here nearby is nothing else, okay. and then of course everything concentrates on that place, but mm -hmm. there is, isn't so many of these cars, except Tesla, mm -hmm. we're in Munich, We've got wealthy people and mm -hmm. people thinking forward mm -hmm. are saying, hey, I drive an EV car and this should be a Tesla instead of an mm -hmm. S car. So, so you have superchargers around here for Tesla? Uh, no, surprisingly, no? no superchargers here in Munich. Okay. I hope I'm not saying something wrong now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my, my current status is that in Munich, you don't have superchargers. Mm -hmm. Um, only about 20 kilometers away from Munich, south and north mm -hmm. wise from Munich, you've got some superchargers. Well, that's where you need them anyway, because if you're in the city, yeah. you're going to go out somewhere and that's where and you'll And anyway, stop. they yeah. have big enough batteries for traveling sure. around for days yep. in Munich. And mm -hmm. uh, who owns a Tesla has mostly also owns a house and a garage where he can mm -hmm. charge with the wall box. Okay. And they don't need really, it's only for traveling, just right. a bit yeah, right. abroad. So, I mean, the global numbers uh, maybe aren't being fueled by the German population per se, but you know, there is some sales coming happening in Germany and there is some movement, yeah. even though it's slower than probably a lot of the other countries, specifically in Europe. Uh, Nissan is still doing well, but it's the second uh, selling, best selling EV for, for the year as well. It's got uh, just under 57,000 units that have been sold uh, year to date. And then the Chinese, of course, round out kind of the rest of them. Uh, I don't talk a lot about China because as you know, they're going crazy yeah. with EVs. It's a it's a huge industry uh, between B BAIC and J uh, JAC and BYD and all these kind of guys that are yeah. out there. So uh, I kind of stick to the rest of the world from that perspective. Great to see the numbers though. And I think the, you know, Tesla is certainly the number one uh, as the automotive manufacturer and then the China, a couple of Chinese ones are second and third. But I, I, again, I go back to that original statement where you know almost a 70% increase year over year in sales globally is a phenomenal impact, and that's kind of what we're seeing it where it's Luckily. happened. So. Yeah. Luckily, exactly. Um, let's get to the next story here. Um, this is something I have a lot of people in the USA that are um, viewers, and I thank you for that. So I wanted to touch quickly on the incentives, and maybe you could add your two cents from a German perspective of what's going on here. But just to remind people that there are incentives in the USA still for electric cars. Now, um, there's that $7,500 federal tax credit. It's dependent on your income, so it may or may not be the full $7,500 US, so you have to look at that. Um, and they do tend to phase out once a manufacturer hits a magical number of 200,000 units shipped. And that's not so a specific model, that's for all the models that that manufacturer carries. In Tesla's case, it's all their models. So Tesla has reached 200,000. Uh, General Motors is close. They're probably going to be the next ones to reach that number uh, between the Bolt and the Volt. These are great North American cars that are selling well. And then Nissan still has a lot of headroom. But uh, they, they and Ford, believe it or not, we don't hear a lot about Ford doing much in the EV side, but they're slowly gaining ground and hitting that. So, um, you know, there's the federal tax credits, of course, and then there are, you have to check your local and state EV incentives as well, because there's a lot going on. Specifically, California has some great rebates up to 4500 depending on your income, and then Connecticut, Colorado, Delaware, Louisiana. Uh, Maryland, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, there you go, and New York State and Washington, D.C. Uh, offer a bunch of incentives. They're kind of the top states. So um, take advantage of those uh, for my USA listeners if you do have them. And then on top of that, go to your, your EV dealer and see if they have incentives. Some of them offer 0% financing for EVs. Some have additional uh, dollars off. Now, What's the, I, I, and I talked about a story about Tesla a few months ago and the whole German incentive thing that they were with, so I don't want to get specifically get into Tesla, but what's the incentives here in Germany for EV buyers? Um, how it seems to me it's a bit better mm -hmm. than in Is some it? other places. So okay. um, just, I received, about, so you've got a uh, incentive of 2,000 euros okay. as a, yeah, as, as a general incentive. And um, then the car maker, just like Nissan for the Leaf, gave me an additional 4,200 euros, so mm -hmm. it's 6-2 altogether okay. um, that you get as a discount. You know? But still, you have to see that this is a lot less uh, than you normally get from if you go to Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, and if you've got a little bit of skills mm -hmm. for um, pushing or pulling down uh, the, the car maker, and then they give you about, if you're lucky, 15 to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 15 to 20% cheaper. Mm -hmm. So still 6.2 sounds impressive, 
but actually it's not compared to maybe a BMW with the same price of 42,000 euros was my Nissan Leaf okay. Tecna. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a comparable BMW for that price, you can get, get it for about, let me say, 28,000 euros. Ooh. Uh, if you're skilled or if you know someone, but in the EV sector, there's not so much um, playground for it. Because even right. if I go to BMW, where I've got good contacts, for example, mm -hmm. they can't give me more than, let me say, maximum 9%, mm -hmm. where I'm getting 20 for combustion engines, for example. Mm -hmm. And this is being blocked by don't know who. But um, Well, it could be just a profit margins. We know that for a lot yeah. of the other manufacturers, you know, I mean, Tesla included, that's why... You know they're pushing the the, the higher um, uh, priced model three right now because of the Same higher margins available, right? Uh, the the long range version because of the profit margins. So for a lot of other manufacturers, EVs are still they're still ramping up their battery production, their partnerships, their their skill sets, and their manufacturing for those economies of scale, which aren't there maybe for some of them. So they don't have a lot of profit room. They're yeah. running on thinner profit. That's why they do it exactly. Right. Yeah. And now in, in a few years, when we start seeing the volumes, when we start seeing all the other manufacturers really get into it, you know, the, the VW group, again, a great example, where they're going to, you know, look at producing a million EVs at some point in the next few years, then we'll start to see probably the prices come down and maybe more room for negotiating there. And there is even uh, a progress, what mm -hmm. you can see, because if we take a look at the BMW i3 with the mm -hmm. new battery pack with a 42 kilowatt hour battery mm -hmm. pack, um, the price stayed the same. So if you ordered... Yeah. An i3 about four months ago, you can get now the 42 kilowatt hour version for the same money because the battery production price mm. uh, stays on the same level now. Mm -hmm. And yep. that's the first actual progress. We can call it a progress that's because right. normally you would have expected BMW to raise uh, the price for, for actually almost 10 kilowatt hours more than, mm -hmm. this, that, than this car has. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of good for everyone who orders it now and kind of rubbish yeah. if someone ordered it about three yep. months yeah. ago yeah Oops. maybe they'll yeah. do a swap deal who knows but uh, yeah. no absolutely right and and you know those prices of the batteries per kilowatt hour are coming down you know to that yeah. magical hundred dollar us or and, and potentially below that in the future you know um, i talked about this i think on my last show or a couple of shows ago that when they you know evs first came out and the you know the, the nice uh, leaf came out in 2010 i mean i think the cost per kilowatt hour was something like you know, 1000 to $2,000 based on the economies of scale. Yeah. It was a 24 kilowatt, right, when, when they first came out. Now we're in the 170-ish range. So you could really see, you know, just like phones and computers, technology is all the yeah. same as it gets better. Same development. More people get into it. So on that, on the, the story of Volkswagen now, one thing I wanted to talk about quickly was that Volkswagen, uh, and I'm excited about the ID platform. I think you, you may have seen some of them here locally, uh, at least some of the announcements. But... Um, you know, they have the buzz, right? They have kind of a throwback to the to the van that they're doing electrified version. Then they have their hatchback and I think a sedan that Volkswagen is going to jump fully into to the full electrified. Because the, the E-Dolf is just kind of a transition vehicle, yeah, right? Yeah, it was, I call it a compliance vehicle. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Like I'm glad Volkswagen is building, has, has built the E-Golf, continues to sell it mainly in Europe, not so much in North America. But it really was a compliance mechanism for the legis the areas that required that, like California and maybe parts of Europe and stuff. Yeah. For them to play in the game, they had to build something, and they did. It's a great car, you know that that MEB platform, right on the Golf. If I if I got that right, great car. But the ID is really their full step, full launch into full electrification on a new platform, right, a ground up platform. And this was two weeks ago. I yeah. was at the ID workshop. You were okay at the Volkswagen Excellent. plant. Yep. And um, I know quite a lot about it, so if you've got questions, I can ask. Well, them, explain. I mean, what what I'm understood is I that they're going to come out. Directly. Yeah, and this is stuff you can talk about. You're not either NDA or anything on some of this, so no, <laughs> I no, hope no. that I can, of course. <laughs> well, I know that my understanding is that it's going to be model year 2020 that the ID is going to start uh, being available for, um, and that the electric hatchback, uh, most likely in Europe first. I don't know if it's going to end up in North America or if even North America will get the hatchback version. Hatchbacks are really popular in, in North America as they are here. Um, but uh, that they're going to come out with three kind of battery powertrain versions of that, a base somewhere around 200, 300, uh, sorry, 30 kilometers or 205 miles. And these are WLTP numbers. I don't have EPAs 
on that, and that's about a 48 kilowatt hour it's battery pack. It's going to be 40, 46 kilowatt 46, hours. 46, okay. Uh, 62 kilowatt hours okay. and 82 kilowatt hours. It's interesting why those numbers, they just seem to be a little bit <clears throat> higher or lower than some of the, what we're seeing some of the others come yeah, out with. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Is that a German thing or <laughs> <laughs> just to be different? <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, yeah. we yeah. know that yeah. these six kilowatt hours more uh, do really make a difference. They do. Because if we talk about 280 kilometers or 350 kilometers, it makes such a big difference, mm -hmm. actually. So um, Yeah, for sure. Uh, and pricing around, from my understanding, in the 32,000, that's pounds UK, uh, 35 yeah. and a half euros, maybe 42,000, low 40s US. Uh, I guess starting at that and then going up from there yeah. without any incentives or anything on that. Yeah. Uh, as you said, the second will get around 450-ish or so, and the third, which now they're saying could be up to 600 kilometers. Have you heard something uh, that yes, high? Yes, definitely. So, so it's so. going to be facing about 600 kilometers. Okay. Uh, 82 kilowatt hours with a fuel. Uh, with a fuel I'm always trying to say fuel yeah. consumption average. Yeah. With a consumption average of about uh, 15 and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. If you just count, it's about 600 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And for the ID Vision, mm -hmm. uh, which name Vision just uh, lets me think of a, some kind of future stuff, yeah. but it's not, it's coming quite soon. Exactly. Um, there's also going to be available 110 kilowatt hour battery. Okay. And when I wow. asked Vol wow. Volkswagen, uh, why not more? Because if you go into the Tesla forum and say, hey, there's going to be 110 kilowatt hour battery, they ask, hey, why only 110? Because the Tesla Model S, uh, has been available with 100 kilowatt hours for about five years now. Say, wow. And why yeah. only 110? And Volkswagen's answer mm -hmm. was that they're not trying to battle Tesla because they're trying to offer something in an, in, in an affordable price segment. Right. Because even if many Tesla people say that everyone can afford a Tesla, it's not the truth. It's mm -hmm. just not the truth. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why Volkswagen is trying to follow a different strategy of um, offering something with 110 kilowatt hours, mm -hmm. because after having crossed the border of 110, it's going to be more expensive. And if they did 150, what I think could be possible nowadays, um, it wouldn't be affordable for the majority of the people because Volkswagen says, says it's a car for the folks. Mm -hmm. And this is something that they have to keep somehow, mm -hmm. uh, follow this strategy, and that's why only 110. As a maximum. And it could be just a, a pure physics or mechanical. You can only get so many cells, yeah. whether they're cylindrical or pouch, it depends on the design, into a, that, a common platform of some sort, right? Because that's my understanding, is these are going to be built in Germany. Uh, on, in, uh, I'm not sure if in one plant or multiple plants. I think I don't know if they're retooling a bunch of plants for these lines. I would read about it soon uh, at another, another article. But I mean, you know, maybe only so much physical space, yeah. you know, unless they change, you know, modify the platform. And my, my understanding is they're going to have 7.2 or 11 kilowatt charging capabilities for a standard, yeah, yeah. 120, mm -hmm. for 125 kilowatt and DC is, mm -hmm. is exactly what uh, these cars can take. Mm -hmm. They have um, liquid cooling, so even the smallest Perfect. battery has liquid cooling. Yeah. And um, uh, the uh, of course, Volkswagen works together with Ionity, mm -hmm. which is going to be building up about 400 chargers in Europe. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, CCS, which is kind of a disadvantage. It's so not going to be a dual like, Chatamo as well. No, no, because okay. um, they are trying to support the European standard, and okay. it's CCS, mm -hmm. uh, except in France and in Austria, where there is a law which says if they build up about six to twelve of these Ionity mm -hmm. stations, uh, you have to have one Chatamo in the offer. Okay. Only one of six or twelve, but even better than nothing, mm -hmm. because uh, if. Ionity is slowly taking over this um, uh, um, network, mm -hmm. charging network. Mm -hmm. People like us with the Nissan Leaf would have bad luck yep. uh, actually only <laughs> using the AC stuff, and right. that's not the target of um, uh, driving exactly, the highway. Exactly. <laughs> so, well, and in North America, of course, um, and I talked about this, uh, Volkswagen is part of the Electrify America campaign, so they are building dual purpose both CCS uh, combo and Chatamo stations across the U.S. and, yeah. and there'll be multiple of, of those available. Um, so that's great. And, and that's what Audi's part of as well. They're part of all that, that yeah. uh, conglomerate. Uh, so excellent. Well, I mean, it's good to see Volkswagen continue to make some progress. I mean, you know, they've got a big hole to climb out of, right? <laughs> so the more progress, the better I get. I get comments and emails about this, so about pumping Volkswagen. But hey, you know, 
the more choice, the better, guys. And look at it as a positive that, uh, you know, people stumble and make mistakes. Let's let's just move on and, and look to the future. That's, that's the right attitude. Because, yeah. I mean, uh, we have about 90, I could say 98, 99% of the people working for Volkswagen don't have to do anything mm -hmm. with these uh, rumors and, mm -hmm. and, and whatever we call it, uh, tricks. Only these 10 people who yep. knew it. Yep. And I think these 98, 99% of the rest of the people working for Volkswagen shouldn't suffer from that. Agreed. And I think we shouldn't be punishing them because still they are great quality cars. I mean, Volkswagen doesn't Absolutely. pay me for saying that. Mm -hmm. I didn't yep. expect you to talk about Volkswagen nope. now. But I mean, these are amazing mm -hmm. uh, quality cars. Yes, they are. And especially now with the ID family, it's going to be big, big punch. I'm and um, they're going to change a lot in the e-mobility sector, luckily, mm -hmm. because there is actually no other... EV, uh, no other German car maker going so much into this EV direction, just like the Mercedes, which right. came out now, GQ, which uh, many people criticize as not being so yeah. much a fully valuable electric mm -hmm. vehicle just for having something in the offer. Yep. But Volkswagen does it a different way yep. and uh, creates a pure EV car mm -hmm. and not an EV car which comes from the plant where uh, the combustion engine is produced mm -hmm. parallel to that. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, from the ground up, yeah, basically. Yeah, from the ground up, yeah. And so because of your connections, whenever Volkswagen comes out with, a, you know, a kind of a launch or something, let me know. I'd love to fly over and join you for that. So, definitely. you know, definitely. That's, you know, it's, it's going to be networking, guys. It's going to be <laughs> happening a lot in 2019 with I'm the EV cars in 2020. I'll I'm looking forward you know, to that. Um, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to come over. I will be driving and, you know, them before stuff. they are just wow. actually yeah. being introduced to, Excellent. to the people by Good. the press and Good. stuff so um, I think it's important yeah it's very important mm -hmm. I mean it's very important doing that what you do just for throwing out the the, uh, the message to the people yes because I think many people don't even know anything about e-mobility unfortunately that's what part of what I do and what you do is education for folks yeah. switch gears into Kia I talked about Kia a lot I just wanted there was a quick article that talked about uh, the, the Nero coming in at around 300 miles and I think that's an EPA estimate uh, 301 uh, actually it's a WLTP so EPA would be a little less about 260 but that's pretty good for the Nero which is I mean you've got the Kona from Hyundai which is kind of a smaller entry-level SUV ish type of uh, EV which is great the Nero is a bit bigger I think the Nero is more your two dogs or two kids and a dog and you know parents kind of yeah. with, with some boot space that you can carry stuff around 450 in. liters for, which makes yeah. it just interesting exactly compared to the Kona yeah which yeah. my biggest criticism but I, I was so surprised when I saw it in Geneva mm -hmm. I just also reviewed it that the um the the the, the boot space is so small that mm -hmm. I me personally I, I couldn't start anything with this car with a daughter and a wife mm -hmm. I mean not even a buggy fits in there right compared to the Nissan Leaf which has mm -hmm. 435 liters of boot space mm -hmm. um that's true. It's a big that's difference. Dis yeah. dis I mean, it's great for a couple or somebody or a single person that wants just that little SUV-ish or little, and yeah, it's great maneuverability. Yeah. And, and it's beautiful urban, and it's really, nice really valuable. And yeah. I think more valuable than the Nissan Leaf is yeah. from the interior. Mm -hmm. But uh, the problem is still on the back seat. So I cannot sit behind yeah. myself mm -hmm. in the Kona okay. and in the Nissan Leaf, I can. You can. So. Um, and have you driven the Nero? Have you taken one of those out? I haven't driven the Nero yet, but okay. of course it's bigger. So the mm -hmm. wheelbase is yep. bigger. And it shares, the platform actually is the same engine, 204 horsepower, mm -hmm. uh, 64 kilowatt hour battery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can sit behind myself and as mentioned, 450 liters of boot space makes, makes it in my eyes a lot more valuable. And mm -hmm. Kia's a fantastic car. So the quality, seven years of warranty and beautiful looks. So in my yeah. eyes, if, I, uh, if someone asked me to choose between uh, Kona and Nero, from off the line, definitely I take the Nero. I agree with that. Just a family man yep. and just, you know. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, throwing a bike in the back, do you want to go biking yeah. or whatever, you know, you got to go to Ikea and grab something. We know they're all long boxes, <laughs> yeah. you know, and there's one of three type of thing at Ikea. So you need some of that space. And what makes it compelling is the price point. You get a pretty good amount of space, pretty good amount of tech, great driving habits, right? Um, you know, uh, and pretty good uh, build quality because Hyundai and Kia have come a long way from the Definitely. from the old pony days that I remember way back when, especially for Hyundai. And for, you know, about 30,000 pounds, I don't know what that is in, in euros. It's about th th oh, under 40 just US, a, just, you know. Just a bit more. A little bit more, yeah. but under 40 US, where you're looking at a Model X at double the price. Yeah, you, know, you can, for, for 45,000 yes, bucks, 45,000 euros, and mm -hmm. let me say 42,000 yep. pounds, you have a fully equipped yep. 
Nero yeah. with everything that you need. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, leather seats, leather, mm -hmm. leather cooling, so seat cooling, seat heating, yep. steering, anything. So um, in my eyes, okay, still not, not, not cheap, of no. course, because it's still a Kia. Yep. Just we have yep. to say that because yep. it's still not a premium car segment mm -hmm. and many people buy cars for having the reputation of driving this and that yep. and the Kia is, hasn't still arrived in this segment wow, but 45,000 for what you get mm -hmm. is amazing in my eyes I so. agree I mean and you know Hyundai is the um, I'm trying to if I got this right now Hyundai is the majority owner of Kia I think they're 51 percent because Kia oh, was a separate that. a few years ago they bought them several years ago for somebody's gonna oh, send okay. me a comment so, but their build quality has been just outstanding over the last decade. Yeah. They've really, really come up. I mean, you know, I'm sure, I know Bjorn's probably reviewed this already. I mean, the fit and finish is going to be decent in these cars. They're not going to be, you know, a, a subcompact, uh, other brand type, you know, what, I'm not going to name any brands, but it's going to be a decently a fit and finished car. And, and it's well beautiful. Appointed. I mean, take it's a, a lovely car. I yeah. just, it's a lovely car. It looks yeah. a bit like a Porsche Cayenne from yeah, the front Yeah, I noticed that <laughs> from this angle. So With the can, arrow, yeah. LED lights. That's right. The back, the, uh, it, it's beautiful. It's valuable. It doesn't look cheap. Yeah. It's, it's thought through. So yeah. it's not like they threw something just on the market for saying, hey, we have something in that's the right. offer. That's right. And that's um, together, compliments, so. really, because Kia isn't really now the number one uh, EV car maker. Exactly, so. exactly. So my hat's off to Kia. You know, continue to follow that. And uh, I, again, anybody who's getting one, I think they're, are they for sale already in Europe now? I'm trying Near to think. They've taken, no, yeah, taken pre-orders, I believe, like Norway, I think, maybe. Is I think they did, dumped, yes, but yeah, yeah, haven't got delivered yet. So and we're like, waiting on the North American side. I haven't even seen the launch yet in Canada or the U.S., but it's coming. But, you know, definitely, if anybody orders one, let me know. Send me an email or put a comment uh, in the comment section. That would be fantastic. Switch gears quickly back to Audi. Last show, I featured the Audi e-tron announcement, which I, which I said on the show was one of the better press announcements that I've seen from, uh, you know, maybe next to Tesla for a while. I haven't been impressed with a lot of the, the announcements that come out and they start live streaming because they go on and on and on about this and that and this and let's just get to the car. Let's just get to the stats. Come on, get us the good news. And, you know, Mercedes was very disappointing in what they did with the EQ. Um, you know, even sometimes Tesla goes on and on and on. But I think the Audi was pretty good. They, you know, they framed it to where they want to take the direction of their EV plans and they brought out the, the vehicle and they talked about specs and they, they, they I think did a pretty good job. I'm very pumped about the e-tron. I think it's, you know, the SUV space we know is lucrative. We know that that's a profitable space, both in North America and in European markets, especially a more compact, because I think this is like, what, a Q5 size type vehicle, if they were to rate it in their brands. Um, I, from what I'm reading, though, the only thing is that they're not going to stock these at dealerships. Is that what you've heard as well? They're going to be special order only? Have you heard anything like that about the e-tron? I haven't. Did you go? I, the I have to be honest. I haven't really went okay. uh, yet into this uh, e-tron thing. Okay. Because again, I think the e-tron is just like the EQ Mercedes. Okay. Not ha hasn't got developed for being really an e EV car. So it's more. Let's take because something and yeah, slap. Yeah, it's just like mm -hmm. the e Golf. Yep. Which I'm not just trying to say anything negative mm -hmm. about because mm -hmm. it's a fantastic car. Mm -hmm. But the e Golf is nothing else than a Golf uh, Seven, mm -hmm. which in instead of a combustion engine has a battery pack. Yep. And when I went to this ID workshop, they showed what really the difference is. There is a difference if a car gets developed as an EV car mm -hmm. or just a regular combustion engine okay. car where they just make an EV car. So what would some of those differences be? The, the difference is the battery pack. If you mm -hmm. take a, a look at a rough model, just like we could see it without the body of the car, mm -hmm. um, the battery pack is just like a square, just like this, looks like that, and is, is, is a flat platform with the battery cells not taking so much space. And if we take um, the Golf, Eagle, for example, you've got battery pack and you've got here some, some packs up and here's some packs up because they need to find places to, to do this construction because the car um, somehow bothers because it hasn't got developed for mm -hmm. uh, just um, including a battery pack. And mm. different with the ID models, which first they have the battery and then they design the rest for making it as small as possible, as compact as possible, and especially for having uh, accidents or something like that, mm -hmm. different pr pr protection uh, strategies mm -hmm. behind it. Crumpled zones. Just like, yeah, like just like totally mm -hmm. different. So that's yep. why I say the e-tron, I, I guess it's a fantastic car because German car makers, it's not because I'm from Germany, yeah. but German car makers make fantastic they cars. Do. And even this and the EQ Mercedes is, mm -hmm. but 
it's still not a fully valuable EV car in my eyes. Mm -hmm. so, so because of that, I mean, you know, the art this article I'm referencing talks about, you know, maybe the reason Audi is, doesn't really care about stocking these is because, it, again, it could be a bit of a profit loser for them or a bit of a loss on that because it's their kind of first venture into it. And that's understandable as more and more car manufacturers get into more heavily pro producing electric vehicles, they're not at a point where they got these economy scales like Tesla does, for an example, where they've been building cars for you know twelve years now or or nine years, whatever it is, um, and, and you know and they're ramping that up even more. So, would you think that that could be one of the reasons that maybe they don't want to start um, stocking these at this point, or they just they just want to slowly roll out and see what happens? Is that kind of how Audi does things, or what do you? Think? I think uh, uh, <laughs> every car maker except Tesla. Has doesn't have the um, um, the idea behind it of changing the world. Mm -hmm. It's it's of course the profit. I mean they have uh, they have so much of um, you know they have so many employees that they have to pay. So we also have to see the infos behind it. And of course, combustion engines are still about ninety seven percent. I'd say yeah. the the core value of a mm -hmm. car maker. Mm -hmm. And if now they just immediately start pushing so much the EV cars, just like the e-tron, just like the Mercedes EQ and stuff, many people get irritated, just like the Germans especially, uh, because everyone is laughing about me of having bought an Nissan Leaf. Why not combustion engine? Oh, come on, that's mm. that's that's not the truth. That's rubbish. What they're saying. I mean, producing these battery packs <laughs> causes so much CO two that right. you can drive a combustion engine for hundred thousand kilometers and stuff. You know, um, the, the the info, the main knowledge about EV hasn't arrived yet, and um, the car makers follow of what the people, the possible clients and buyers mm. think, and not what actually should be they know what okay. should be yep. and maybe they would like to but parallel to that they don't want to lose uh the core client group mm -hmm. and it's not the ev driver mm -hmm. it's not the ev driver so <laughs> understand you know it's that shift and it's going to take some time from the other auto yeah. manufacturers that aren't fully invested in evs yet but it is going to happen and you got to take it's some some baby steps as i look at it and, and certainly <laughs> audi's taking it's a nice car it's going to because they're going to have a great build quality. Sure. It's going to be a great size. It's still going to be maneuverable, practical for European and North American markets because it won't be huge. The reputation will be there. It'll have good batteries, a good thermal management. It'll have all the stuff like Jaguar. You know, and I mean, you know, now they're what the I-Pace has built kind of a ground up approach. So they're taking a little bit different in trying to lead. And they're also suffering something. from the charging. But they're I, still I, figuring that out, yeah. yeah. Because more promised than actually mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. And then again, of course, the Tesla section comes and says, yep. here you get what you, here you get, what you yep. get promised, mm -hmm. and there you don't. And so still it's always, it. uh, yeah. They'll have software or over-the-air updates, I think, as well on the yeah. Jaguar side. So while well, the e-tron officially goes on sale in the US uh, in mid-2019, I know in Canada they'll start to take pre-orders. Uh, if not taking it now, uh, you can certainly pre. Yes, you can pre-order it now. Just we talked about that. Um, so we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see if Audi really is serious about this, and if we start seeing some in showrooms, or if they, if you walk in and you ask an Audi guy about the e-tron, if they don't immediately, well, why don't you look at the Q5 instead or something else? You know, why don't you look at this? I, we'll I don't see. think that they're gonna say this. No. They gonna. They're not gonna know about it. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, that's my 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 perfect. Yeah. Um, uh, um, so my my perfect. Um, I'm looking for the word. Just hold on for a second. Um, example. Okay. My per Scenario, <laughs> simple word yeah. like that. Yeah. My perfect example yeah. is my Nissan dealer, yeah. who uh, actually didn't. It's not criticism. It's just because he hasn't got in touch with that yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. No one actually is asking for EV cars. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. No one, mm -hmm. and they don't know anything about it. Right. And as soon as they don't go to these workshops, that more and more the car manufacturers are going to be offering because they need to. Mm -hmm. The car guy standing there doesn't know anything about it. So you ask <laughs> something and he has no idea. I mean, when I was in uh, uh, Tesla Model 3, even the Tesla guys don't, because it, when I was in uh, uh, at the Goodwood Festival of Speed yes, uh, two months England. ago, yep. mm -hmm. there was a Tesla Model 3, mm -hmm. and I asked the guy if uh, uh, he could tell me um, which battery pack this has and what's the, what's the horsepower. And he said, Mm -mm, uh, these cars don't have horsepower. We are communicating more the battery or the, the range. 
And I said, what, what does the range ha have to do with, with, with the horseback? So he didn't know what to okay. answer because he didn't know what to say. That's, that's interesting. And then, mm. um, you yeah. know, you get Eve. So even the guys mm. standing there for answering questions for EV cars. <laughs> so what do you expect from the guys not selling the EV yeah. cars? That's mm -hmm. the thing, you know. A great point. So hopefully, you know, the <laughs> manufacturers will educate their sales force. Hopefully. And more and more people will start walking into showrooms asking those questions. And I hope Audi can crank these uh, out from their from the only plant they have is going to be in, is in Belgium. Um, and we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. I hope that it's not just promises of these and it's a wait and wait and wait because we know that buyers that are really starting to get interested in EVs won't wait forever. They, they, you know, they may not wait for the Model 3 syndrome. I don't think they see that repeated a lot. And people going jump to, expect, to these right? cars just like right. Leaf, mm -hmm. just like Ionic, just like yep. Kona, mm -hmm. as alternatives, yep. even if less quality, less reputation, but right. it's available. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, also a really good car. And hopefully the car manufacturers follow what BMW does, because if you walk into a BMW showroom now, you've got everywhere standing the i3s and i8s mm -hmm. with wall boxes True. showing how it works yeah. so that you, even if you haven't thought of asking something about maybe you do, because you see, ah, what's that? Mm -hmm. And you get curious about it. Mm -hmm. you know? I have to agree with you. BMW has done a great job at their dealership level of promoting electrification, both in the i3 and the i8. I mean, the i8's got a specific audience, obviously, but in the i3, you go in there and they have the setup and they have somebody who, or a few people that can actually talk about it. They have a service bay that'll talk about it as well. They're very open about the serviceability and the maintenance side of that and very, you know, uh, just they don't mind talking about it, whereas some of the others are still, yeah. again, it's, it's a question Kept of what back. they're gonna say back. Yeah. So, well, you mentioned the Model 3, so I wanted to come out. I can't do a show without saying something about the Model 3. Well, it's come out that they Tesla Model 3 in North America through the uh, NHTSA, NHTSA, as we say, has received a perfect five-star safety rating in every crash test category. And this is something that Elon said during the reveal back in March 31st of 2016, that the Model 3 would have a five-star rating. Does that surprise you? I don't know how, I mean, the, the really, end caps. Because we, we already know uh, right. of the, the perfect results of the Model S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Nissan faced the same, actually, with the Leaf. Mm -hmm. A five-star result. For end cap. We haven't um, seen the, the Nissan yet. But, and uh, CAP, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so on YouTube, you can find several of these Nissan videos yep. showing how, yep. how safe it is. Mm -hmm. So actually, I have to say, to watch it from, from a different uh, angle, I expect this car to reach it because if a Nissan Leaf does it for about 20,000 bucks less, I <laughs> yep. expect a Model 3 to do it as well. You would hope so. And maybe make so. your copy for you too. You know? <laughs> they haven't got that far. <laughs> well, I mean, certainly it's received five star in both the front uh, frontal crash, side crash and rollover tests. And again, that's to be expected. Part of that though, for folks that may not be aware, that's the inherent design of the battery electric vehicles anyway of that skateboard platform. You get extra rigidity from the battery packs being on the floor. Everybody has a steel or, or the, the, the alloy, whatever mix they're using for a safety cage perspective, but that added rigidity from the batteries on the floor really adds to the structural integrity of the vehicle. So helping things of, of absorbing energy and to redirecting energy and side impacts, frontal impacts and so forth. And not burning down and immediately, just like many, so, many people right. ask me, hey, where are you? Are yeah. you are you stuck on the street because, uh, in the streets because you uh, couldn't charge or are you burning down? Yeah. So these are the silly comments that you always have to uh, listen to when you are an EV driver. We do get a few yeah. silly comments, but we also get, what is that? How are you, how are you able to go a Yeah, many people are that? impressed by mm -hmm. that yeah. because they watch me accelerating at a green light mm -hmm. and I can see in the side mirrors the people turning their heads yeah. around because they are just surprised <laughs> that they couldn't hear anything because they can, could see me accelerating mm -hmm. quite mm -hmm. heavily, mm -hmm. but they couldn't hear anything. Right. And um, off the that's line, they go also pretty, impressive. It is yeah. off, impressive, impressive. Now, one last update on Tesla as well, that they are upping the supercharger idling fees. And that's not a surprise because as a growing number of Model 3s and other Tesla uh, cars that are being sold at Tesla, as I mentioned earlier, is, is selling like crazy around globally, all these superchargers are starting to fill up with people. And they don't want you plugged in and sitting there and then just walking away and your car is charged and it's just sitting there, sitting there. They want their, their bays and, and stalled to be available for the next people. So they've they've upped their service fees, and I won't get into There's an extensive list that I'll put on the screen here that, that talks about the pricing, and you can Google this stuff. But, you know, certainly countries like the United States, where it was 50, 50 cents per minute, they've doubled it to a dollar per minute now. So that means that if you're parked and you're not charging, 
in a spot and it's full, all my other stalls are full, you will get, you will start to pay a buck a minute, up to $50, I think, is the max. So that's they will good. cap it. That's, that's good. the invoice we have to pay for all these people Correct. not taking care about anything. And I'm not just mm -hmm. talking about the combustion engine drivers who right. are permanently parking and blocking the charges, yeah. even here in Munich, especially here in Munich. I know places where they permanently do. Also, the EV drivers, which I could also see today, Zoe parking mm -hmm. uh, in front of a charger and not charging because he can immediately see if he's just mm -hmm. plugged in or not. Mm -hmm. And he's not because he thinks, okay, I can park here. And last time, I just have to say that quickly, yeah. I went to the cinema and in front of the cinema, the biggest cinema in Munich, there is a new uh, charging place mm -hmm. with two parking spaces. And these are premium parking spots. They're close to the door, right? Close to the Really, entrance. really close to the door. Of course, they always are. And yeah. there, they write, you can park here for two, uh, four hours and charge. And um, I didn't need to charge because my Nissan Leaf would had about 80% or something like that. And I said, no, I'm not going to be blocking this because I could have parked there because no one would say anything. I could have parked there, but I said no because I don't need to charge. Someone maybe needs. And instead of that, I parked my car down. I didn't buy a ticket because if you buy a ticket and you park more than two hours in Munich, um, the police can see how longer, so how much mm. you have crossed the two hour border and they can punish you just like each hour. And if mm. you don't buy a ticket, you can maximum uh, pay 10 euros and not more because they can't say how long you okay. parked yep. there. You're right. And so I haven't bought any ticket and I received a 10, uh, 10 euro punishment. Mm. Um, and I knew that before that I will get a punishment anyway, mm -hmm. but I preferred of doing it that way than instead of blocking the, mm -hmm. the, the, the charging parking space. Mm -hmm. And I think we should change our mind because many yes. people, we, we, we do. don't have that much of them. It's just not like, like in Norway and you really have to watch out for them. Mm -hmm. And if these five uh, available, especially if you charge Chadamo uh, uh, oh, yeah. plug, uh, if you have Chadamo plug, you need to find one of these. And if, if three of these five are, are occupied, it's really no fun of driving an EV car. Exactly. No, especially if you've got some enemy EV, enemy sitting right next to you, who can finally say, can you see that this is what I was talking about? Now we have checked the second charger and mm -hmm. still we can't charge because always problems. Yep. It's becoming more yeah. of a problem because as, again, the, the pro proliferation of EVs are happening, yeah. there's more and more coming out there. Infrastructure, in some cases, some places are catching up. Some are a little ahead. Some are catching up. With Tesla, you know, they built, they said, you know, build it and we will come kind of approach. So they built the infrastructure and are continuing to increase it, but their sales are, are skyrocketing. So it's not uncommon to start seeing these kind of fees and, and these kind of penalties, as you mentioned. So... So just be careful if you're a Tesla owner that you will get slapped with some idling fees, as they call it, if you're sitting in superchargers and you're, and you're either already charged and it's full and somebody's waiting. $50 cap on these. And by the way, you can also do in-car payments now. So you don't, uh, they'll set up just with your Tesla account page. You can actually do a, a, a credit out. You can fill out a form, I think, online and use your credit card and they can bill you. So just to make it easier. But again, keep an eye on that and be respectful of, of anybody who wants to charge, whether you're a Tesla owner or not. It's not like with gas stations. That's the most important thing right now. Yeah, you got it. Switching gears to Chrysler. I know Chrysler is not a huge entity here in, in Europe, specifically Germany, but you know they, they announced their portal electric van concept. They've confirmed that it's now going to go in production in some form that, uh, and I've got pictures flashing up here of that, the form that they announced. Um, uh, I don't think it's going to be autonomous, and we won't talk about fully autonomous stuff today, but it looks like it's a six-passenger, smaller minivan-ish type thing, and it's going to replace the Chrysler 300 sedan. And I'm not that concerned. I don't think the Chrysler 300 is really that great of a car, but I'm not a huge Chrysler fan. I apologize, Chrysler. You've done brilliantly on your minivans. I used to have a couple of them when our daughter was a lot younger, and we needed to lug around stuff. But, Us too, Voyager. You know, yeah, Voyager. But you know, <laughs> Town and that, country version. It yeah, was there you one. go. Yeah. I thought, what, did you have the wood panels way back when? No, I. I yeah, my, my my dad had. There you go. Was, uh, See, I, was, I could be his father. Who knows? I'm that old, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but certainly uh, it'll have six passengers and, you know, they've done great jobs. But the rest of their lineup, I just, eh, it doesn't really do anything for me, at least Chrysler North America. But I'm really glad that this is, that they're going to move forward with this concept. So they have the, obviously, the Pacifica Hybrid today, which is doing quite well, by the way. And it's a great, I think, alternative for families that need a minivan that can at least go 50, 60, 70, 80 kilometers, depending on temperature and driving habits and load on a battery only situation. It's a plug-in hybrid. So More before, 50, before they I'd go, say. Right, let's say 50, hey, but that's better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, right? better than you nothing. Know, it could work in some cases, yeah. but the portal will come with, uh, 
It's estimated to have a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, which I guess is great to give you 250 miles of or so of EPA range, maybe more. Uh, we'll have to see their timing for 2020 as a rollout. Um, we don't know charging speeds, but it's estimated that it'll come up, it'll actually be equipped to handle up to 350 kilowatt DC fast charging, which is great as I've reported on and I'm sure you've talked about and seen that there's the ultra fast and then the really super fast Iona you know, thing especially you know, does them yeah, up to 350 and actually currently mm -hmm. no one can use them. That's right. Even the Teslas can't right. because no car can take 350 right. kilowatts. And this is the most important step right now mm -hmm. because this reduces, it's not the charger, it's the car, how much That's the right. capability of taking yep. uh, electricity yep. um, is to, to, to lower this time to wait at the charges. Mm -hmm. Because if you imagine, just for everyone who doesn't know so much about EVs, um, if you charge now, if you can take just like the Hyundai Ionic, which is one of the highest uh, with 70 kilowatts, mm -hmm. which it can take, mm -hmm. comparably an i3 can take 50 or mm -hmm. the Nissan Leaf can take 50. Um, it takes about 40 minutes. Now imagine if this goes up to 350 that you can take, mm -hmm. it's uh, actually Eight times, minutes, five, five, minutes. yeah, 15 yeah. minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes for yeah. charging from zero to 80%. Yep. And that's what makes it really, or starts to make, make it interesting yes. for, for the majority of the people mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. okay, 40 minutes, no, I'm not going to wait there because I can hear many people saying that, mm -hmm. but 15, I mean, come on, you go in, you drink a coffee, go to the toilet and you come out and it already has finished charging. Mm -hmm. So this is the step. Yeah, yep. talked about that. That's where we're headed towards that gas, more of that gas station like experience where, you know, you're only taking five to 10 minutes to refuel your car today, but without the hazards that are involved in that, a similar type of time experience, because as you said, you're going to go in and do something, you know, yep. uh, after a couple hundred kilometers, you need to take a break. After four, five hundred kilometers, four, like, you will. You will. <laughs> you know, we don't talk about range anxiety anymore. And I've said this before, we talk about bladder anxiety. That's kind of where we're <laughs> headed now. We've gone away from range anxiety into that. So so good on Chrysler. I, I can't wait to see this thing if it comes out. I hope you know, it may not be as futuristic as it looks there in the concept, but I think they're going to take a lot of design elements and functionality and put it into the new portals. So stay tuned and, and look out for that. That's going to be exciting for that. Um, I don't know if you saw the announcement from Peugeot, and I like to bring again a lot of the foreign. We don't we don't have a lot of Peugeot in North America, but I think it's it's interesting with their their legend concept that they've come out with um, with a hundred kilowatt hour battery pack that's been announced. Um, you know, it's a pretty interesting looking vehicle. I don't know you know what they're going to do. They're going to offer some form of autonomy. You know, something more digital uh, and info display um, elements into those into into those kind of specs. Um, I don't know how practical this car is going to be, but I'm excited that Peugeot is at least doing something in that, um, you know, 100% electric, electric car with an estimated 100 kilowatt battery pack. Um, I think what's impressive is, is the power of 800 newton meters of torque. Um, That's the e-transmission. You know, yeah, e-transmission, 340 kilowatts of power to, to, to do all wheels, uh, to both axles for four-wheel drive. You have to. Yeah. 800 newton meters, you have to have an all-wheel drive. Otherwise, gonna, even the leaf cannot. <laughs> yesterday, my wife drove the leaf, yeah. and it was rainy or slippery yeah. a bit, yeah. and she just was throttling it. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> because 320 newton meters on the front wheels, actually, this is just impossible, impossible to accelerate with, but 800 newton meters is what an mm -hmm. AMG S63 S faces. I was going to say, it puts it up <laughs> to some, you know, a zero to 100K, zero to, you know, 58 miles an hour or whatever, 60 in about four, under four seconds. That puts it into some impressive categories from an oh, acceleration yes. standpoint. Maximum speed of 220 kilometers per hour. I mean, most of them, I think the Leaf is limited at 150, 144. 144, that's yeah. what it is, yeah. yeah. I, I've never done that speed, by the way, folks. Just want to go on record. <laughs> I did just check out Well, you have the auto. Bond, so you can. We yeah, can't. Yeah. We don't have that in Canada or North America. Um, range is about 600 kilometers according to WLD, LDP. So think about maybe 500 or maybe it's, you know less in EPA. Uh, but again, charging, fast recharge, getting about 500 kilometers in 20 to 25 minutes. I mean, that's outstanding versus you know, taking that one hour down to less than half an hour. And when is that plan to come out? Um, you know, this article didn't talk about dates, but I'm guessing because it's a yeah. new announcement and a little that's bit more on the concept. Careful. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing at least a couple of years. This could be a 2020. It, it's de debuted. At, it's going to debut in the upcoming 2018 okay. Paris Motor Show. If it's show. 2020, so probably it's still okay because then they were just on one level with the ID family from right. Volkswagen. Right. It's only just a bit more than one year, actually. Right. But uh, I'm a bit careful with this kind of info because 100 kilowatt hours, poo, and then... Well, we'll see. 
That's we'll what, we'll that's see. What we only can wait so, for it. But I mean, if you're going to build a performance, you've got to you've got to be able to. It's got to have those kind of specs. It has, it has to. to have. Yeah. Last story I want to talk about before we have a bit of an open discussion here, and uh, I mentioned this on another show, of course, with the with the uh, the older the older Jaguar that the they're electrifying. Well, there's this company and that's that's electrifying more classic cars, and they're doing it with the MGB series. And MGBs are great cars for anybody who doesn't know them. They're they're cute little cars, extremely popular. I see a ton of them in North America. What they want to do with these classics is electrify them. So they're offering the RMW MGB Recreation and also a Jaguar XKSS Recreation vehicle. And uh, these are fully electric vehicles that go up to about 250 kilometers, 155 miles or so of range. Um, I don't have any, I'm just trying to see if there's any battery pack sizes here. I don't have any pack sizes, but, uh, you know, it's zero to 60 in eight uh, seconds, four, 40 kilowatts, at least like that. 40 kilowatt yeah. uh, hours, something like that. Zero to 60 in eight seconds, top speeds of hundred and almost 170 kilometers an hour, 105 miles an hour. But at least um, the power output of 70 kilowatts. 70 kilowatts. Yeah. Or so. And these aren't, you know, you know, look, you don't buy an MGB to race people with. These are open air fun vehicles, right? Yeah. Driving around like the, like the, like the, the older Jaguars and things like that. That There are no convertibles in the EV segment yet. So, uh, yeah, that's correct. Not really new ones that are off the line that are coming. If so they're not retrofitted ones, earlier quite cars. a good segment for everyone who likes to. Yeah, use. it's a great start. I mean, uh, pricing around, uh, expensive though. The MGB will be around 83,000 pounds, 108,000 US, I think. So <laughs> that's quite a lot of money. For the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Yeah. But, you know, hey, any car that doesn't have a tailpipe, uh, you know, is going to be a good thing in my mind. So uh, congratulations. Yeah. Let's see how these things go. And if you end up, any of my viewers end up buying one of these, I'd love to hear from you and let me know your thoughts on that. Just before we wrap the show, this has been a pleasure talking to you. I just wanted to have a quick discussion now. We, we talked a little bit off camera about our, our experiences on the LEAF, but, you know, you've had a LEAF now for a number of months. And, you know, barring any, any range issues, because I know you've talked about it on your shows, but you, what's your overall take on the LEAF? So, so good far. question. I uh, can... Your overall take on your leaf. Ah, you my my, so my conclusion yeah. somewhere about that. So, yeah. far, so yeah. I have received my leaf in May, just like you did. Okay. And my overall conclusion is really positive. Mm -hmm. The car is amazingly quiet, just like a Tesla. Mm -hmm. It's really quick, even if some people write and say in some videos that it's not, I can't understand. I'm coming from oh. a BMW M model, and if I say it's quick, it has yep. to be quick. Yep. <laughs> um, and uh, it's beautiful. I just uh, watched my wife driving it uh, in, in the side mirror. She was driving behind mm -hmm. me, and I, I love it. So mm -hmm. I love the design. It's really beautiful with these LEDs, if you buy the LED headlights. Yes. Um, standard in North America. And the build quality is standard in North yeah. America, but yeah. here not, unfortunately. Yes, You've got right. these cheap halogen lights, mm -hmm. unfortunately, if you don't take the tech matters like me or the SL trim. Mm -hmm. Um, it's um, it's it's really spacious from the interior, mm -hmm. so I could also go on a holiday if there wasn't the rapid gate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, the build quality is nice. The nav is just like 10 years ago, TomTom -tom navs. Um, the only problem that I still have is to know that if now something changes in my life, just like I need to drive about 500 kilometers per day and would need to drive back because I have an appointment in Hamburg, I'm from Munich, Hamburg, 800 kilometers or even less, yes. Um, I couldn't come back without losing about three hours of time. Mm -hmm. And that's my main problem. That if the Nissan Leaf had uh, battery thermal management, this would be an unbeatable car right now on the market. No mm -hmm. one would talk any, any more about the Ionic uh, because the Leaf is more spacious, mm -hmm. it's faster. Mm -hmm. It's So that's the only problem that I see. And unfortunately, this leads me a little bit into the direction of, of considering to buy the i3 with the new battery pack mm -hmm. because, um, of course, yeah, let's not talk about the quality, but, but right. it's still 10,000 euros more, the i3. Mm -hmm. um, quality, um, performance, I'm a performance guy. I love yep. hitting it around the corners and just driving a bit more speed mm -hmm. and accelerating, even if many might say that I'm a bit silly and I'm out of that age. No, <laughs> it's, all, it's all fun. We but I live yeah. in Germany. We can yeah. do it still. Yep. Um, but my altogether conclusion until now, as I use it, 80% urban city traffic is really positive. Mm -hmm. So it's a fantastic car, and mm -hmm. I still can't, I don't know why they haven't included for about two thousand additional bucks of well i can i can tell you that i'm not sure if it's it would be two thousand dollars but i think it's all about profitability right we, we we talked about that with some of the other other manufacturers and at the end of the day nissan's a car company that's in to make money there's no doubt about that but what about the zoe 
Well, I understand that. And I mean, that's a little bit different, uh, maybe a little bit different scenario. Maybe, the, you know, that brand and that market, it's a little mm -hmm. smaller car. So, you know, it's got some things there. I think what they wanted to do with the Leaf is, you know, is keep that, that, that platform, you know, modernize it a bit, but try to keep the price down as much as they could to, to go into that white space of a market where it's either first time EV buyers like myself or guys are looking for a second car to be an EV, something along those, where you don't really need to do the auto, a lot of long range driving. And where they faltered in my case is not so much rapid gait, it's the fact that they weren't informing or properly qualifying buyers, the early buyers. Now it's all out, it's been out for months. So people are, I mean, if you're not, if, you, if you're looking to buy an EV, looking to buy a Leaf, you've done some homework and you've heard about this throttling, so you've got some idea. And if you what ordered it just like us maybe but in correct. January, when, you, yeah. when did you order uh, February, it? February, but I knew about February. it. You know, I, I knew about I it. Didn't so I didn't know about getting it. into it. About I, I ordered it in, in December right. and the brochure just set something totally different yes. than now because now Nissan, of course, is yep. a bit afraid of mm -hmm. everything. I agree. And um, uh, I just was surprised, you know. I agree. Because, I, yeah. I, and of course, now people criticizing me could say, mm -hmm. why did you buy a car where you knew that it hasn't, doesn't have a thermal mm -hmm. management? But I mm -hmm. have to be honest, I'm coming from the combustion engine. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a heck about right. com uh, thermal management. I didn't yeah. know why. Okay. Now I know everything about it. Mm -hmm. But there are many, many thousands of yes. people just like me who don't know these kinds of things so much in depth before they buy it. Mm -hmm. And the experience is going to bring these things, right. this knowledge, and the yeah. thermal management is the same. Yep. You know, I didn't know. I, I didn't even ask. Does this car have a thermal management? Because mm -hmm. I didn't know anything you did about not ask that how question. important it is yeah. actually. And and that is, you know, that that's a shame for the the initial batch of, of buyers for that car yeah. because everybody was really hyped up, positive when it was announced last fall, um, and everybody you know fell into it. And, and I think I agree. If it had, if it has a proper um, thermal management, it, it really would be a, a stunning car. Uh, however, in yeah. saying that, it's still sec, you know, selling, it's still the global leader of the single model uh, EV selling around the world. It's still leading in sales. The Model 3 is going to catch it eventually, but not, I mean, Tesla as a brand will has surpassed the all the sales for the Leaf now, but that's all the, the Tesla cars. So really, be it what you say, and, and I get it. And I think the you know the initial buyers, it wasn't fair for them to not be notified, to not understand the true capabilities of the car. Because had you known that, you may not have purchased the car based on your lifestyle. So I think the Leaf is great if it fits the right lifestyle. I and, and, I, and that's one thing I do when I'm going, going out to educate people and I do these shows is, is, is like, you know, ask those questions. And that's what Nissan needs. If you're listening, Nissan, you, you need to push that down to your sales force. And you need to have you know, your guys and gals equipped with the knowledge that they ask the right questions and they, they tell people, you know, this is what we do to safeguard the battery for these reasons. And if they buy it, then at least they're informed. And it's all about being informed because the Leaf is a great car. Now, you've, you've done a review of the Model 3. You've spent a little time behind the wheel. What's your take uh, on the Model 3? Uh, of course, I considered of buying it, mm -hmm. um, especially after I have experience that I've got these rapid gate issues. But my problem is the only that uh, I have to wait too much time for it. So I'm not Still waiting for any mm -hmm. car 11, 12 months or even a bit, uh, even more. Right. Because actually, if you order it now, even in Germany, you can't really say when you will be receiving. So you have no three. ETAs from Tesla? Because I've been, been hearing that in European, they're trying to start ramping up for left-hand drive cars, not right-hand drive, but left-hand drive European deliveries, that there may be some trickles by the end of the year. Are you hearing anything there? I, I, the I'm, I'm in the forum and I can say yeah. people are proudly uh, posting, hey, I can see um, uh, your Model 3 is going to be delivered in autumn next year or whatever. Oh, so but still. I mean, that's mm -hmm. so much time. Mm -hmm. And what meantime, if I need to change now, because if I say, okay, my Rapigate is a problem for me, I need another car. And actually, I could say that 90% of the people uh, driving an EV car is not going to go back to combustion engine. Right. And this, it's the same with me. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go back to the combustion engine now. But the, the Model 3 kicks out itself because it's uh, not too long time. It's, it's a big question mark. And for me, who says maybe now within the next two months, I need to change. The Model 3 is not a, not a thing mm -hmm. to talk about. 
But the quality, so still, and many people are complaining about the Tesla quality. Mm -hmm. I think with each model, it's getting better and better. Um, I couldn't see anything uh, where I'd say, as a guy who got used to German quality, I wouldn't say it's cheaper than Mercedes or BMW. Maybe in detail, yes, if you drive it for two months, you mm -hmm. would. But um, it's more the technology that you buy and not Correct. the built quality. But it's fantastic, the steering wheel, this a huge central display. It's so future-like, but not too much future-like. Mm -hmm. What I don't like, that too much. Mm -hmm. The leather seats, the design I love. Uh, it has a big boot space and um, uh, and the 75 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, with a performance version where you can battle even uh, any kind of super sports car, mm -hmm. uh, at least from zero to 62 miles. It's definitely got the longest range of any fully electric vehicle on the planet this, right now. And it has an amazing mm -hmm. performance. Yeah. Uh, uh, so um, longitudinal dynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, this makes it really attractive. This would be my car actually, but I think if I need to swap to another EV car, my only opportunity is the i3s, mm -hmm. because this is the only with thermal management now, 42 kilowatt hours even, it's far away from 80, mm -hmm. uh, 75. But um, I'm not trying to catch something that I can't right. just like. They are different cars, but for but different But it's a fantastic reasons. car. So yeah. um, Tesla actually would be my favorite choice, mm. even the Model S. A used one maybe yeah, with 75 kilowatt hour battery. Mm -hmm. But um, the problem is, I think it's worth it if you're driving more than 25, 30,000 kilometers per year, because I still, as uh, previously mentioned, I can get lots of discount on each uh, German mm -hmm. car mm -hmm. brand. And if I drive a luxury car for 500 euros a month, mm -hmm. uh, the Tesla costs 900 euros a month, I'd need to drive more than 400 euros of fuel to get to the same level like mm -hmm. the Tesla costs me. If you drive 30,000 kilometers, no discussion anymore. Right. Tesla is more worth it, but I drive 15 to 20. And then, of course, you say, is it really worth it spending 900 euros on a car? Yes. You know, that's the question. That's, uh, that's, that's the problem. And my final question to you is, I mean, we talked about the German market earlier. You mentioned some things about the infrastructure and it's still, mm. you know, culture. How are you seeing in Europe overall? You travel to Europe, you, you do a lot of events and you talk to a lot of people. How are you seeing the EV momentum in Europe? I mean, you know, I talked about global numbers shooting up. Are you actually seeing that? Um, you can definitely feel that, mm -hmm. the, that a change is really coming. You can see already the shadow underneath the door mm -hmm. um, yep. moving from left to right. Yep. Um, so there's going to happen a lot, especially here in Germany and Europe, definitely because it has. That's the sad point about it. They don't do it because they want to. They mm -hmm. do it because they need to. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the result is the same. The only thing that we need to go the direction of uh, finding a better way to, to uh, the battery battery construction, because still, of course, it causes yep. lots of CO2. Mm -hmm. But um, there is a change. More and more uh, charging stations get just rising out of the ground here in mm -hmm. Munich. Mm -hmm. And especially and in, in Europe, Europe overall. And in Europe, right? overall. In in Europe. Europe yep. in front of Germany, because Germany is mm -hmm. still one of the last ones. <laughs> Um, Last and, holdouts, no. And, and yeah. as you can see, many, yeah. many car makers throwing the EV cars on the market, yes. um, motivating the others, just like if Hyundai does, Kia yeah. needs to, and if yeah. Kia does, Nissan needs to. Mm -hmm. And that's a um, how you call this reaction, a mm -hmm. um, chain reaction. Yep. Uh, so a lot's happening, and you can definitely feel it in Europe mm -hmm. Good. Uh, with these charging stations, with, with the models being in the offer, and more and more discussion, more and more car magazines now having at least one EV car somehow, five pages about it, where yeah. about Good half point. of a year, year ago, there was nothing about mm -hmm. it in the mm -hmm. car magazines, but mm -hmm. now it's coming and coming. Sure. And in 10 years, if we sit down together again, we will be laughing about these mm -hmm. 600 kilometers I will have less hair and, by then, and, too. And, and <laughs> <laughs> less hair than me, I don't I'll think I'll be so. probably pretty close, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I mean, 600 kilometers yeah. range, what, 40 minutes of charging? Yeah. Which century uh, yeah. was that? Exactly. So um, sure. just everyone who's criticizing yeah. it and saying, I, I understand that many people, um, many people's profile is not, um, is not perfectly mm -hmm. suitable now for an EV car. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. Uh, yep. No one should laugh about it or criticize it, just like many uh, people do. Why don't you trade your combustion engine? Because if you live in a house in Munich where maybe other 20 or 30 people do live downtown, mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have any charging possibilities. Yes. Even Still if you've got machine. the money for it, mm -hmm. you're not allowed in the garage. At yeah. least you can, you're happy if you find a parking space, yeah. but not somewhere to charge. Yeah, it's a problem so a lot has money. to happen before yeah. that, before people um, should, where you can say, why don't you buy an EV car? Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. moment 
momentum yep. still has to come. And in 10 years, we're going to be arriving there where you can ask, why don't you buy an EV car? Excellent. And, you know, and that's a worldwide problem. So, yeah. again, as I've told many people, an EV doesn't necessarily fit every lifestyle, every need, no. or every circumstance, as you By said. So, yeah. you know, it's been a pleasure chatting with you, Chris, and, and even before the show offline, uh, getting to know you. And um, how can people find you if they're looking for you? They want to follow you. What do you uh, do? People can find me on Car Mania. Mm -hmm. So, Car and Mania. Um, on YouTube, yeah. On YouTube, yes, of course. On Any YouTube. Twitter? You do and, Twitter? Um, I'm not doing Twitter Instagram and, and Instagram, yes. Yeah, so I'm uploading yeah. some pictures sometimes, but I'm uh -huh. not more focused on, on the video productions okay. because it takes plenty of time and that's yeah. not my main oh, job. I know that. <laughs> and <laughs> you know that. Exactly. And um, yes, mainly I'm doing combustion engine reviews because it's still hard to get these kind of EV cars mm -hmm. if you're not from the first row because I've been doing that for one and a half years now. And mm -hmm. the combustion engine segment, I'm getting the cars, but okay. in the EV, unfortunately, not so much. I need to force it more. Yep. But uh, more and more, I'm going to be getting these EV cars. Good, I did good. rapid gate test. Yeah, you've done some great and reviews. And, and the big, yeah. unfortunately, it's not really performing mm -hmm. my Nissan Leaf review, just like yours, for example, mm -hmm. because I'm mainly a combustion engine channel and you are an EV channel. There you can see the difference. You've got uh, mm -hmm. 60,000 impressive clicks and mm -hmm. I have about 20, if mm -hmm. really, about my Nissan Leaf review. Mm -hmm. And I did some big production and I, I thought, know, oh, the EV yeah. people yeah. sort of love my video. Yeah. And they haven't because they, they don't really. Yeah, so it's interesting. It's the combustion engine yeah. people and they are still not interested. Well, as you it. do more EVs, I think people will pick up on that yeah, too. Yeah, surely, and, and, surely. You know, yeah. The more knowledge is better. Well, yeah. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you and too. And spending, uh, spending it with me and allowing me into your beautiful home. Thank you very much for that, taking the time out of your busy schedule. Now, for those who, you know, uh, as everybody knows, I love to get and emails, so please continue to, to do that. You can reach me at evrevolutionshow at gmail.com is the email address. And, you know, if you have a question or comment, uh, you can send it to me. If you want to do an audio, just, you know, voice record yourself and send that to me. If you want to do a video question or, or something you want to talk about, put it on there, and I'll put it on the show. Under and the subscribe segment. to the channel. And definitely subscribe to the channel on this, uh, that you're watching here. Click that button to subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon because that'll, that way you'll get notified when I push out the next shows and that's always appreciative. Um, I am on Twitter at uh, EV Rev Show is my handle for Twitter. I am not super active, uh, you know, but I do try to post articles. Not and have just some like Kim Kardashian, super active. Yeah, <laughs> not that much, that much. You know, it's a way to get things out and Twitter is a very interesting, got a whole psychology about that. It's an interesting beast, <laughs> that's for sure. But, you know, I'd love you to follow me if you'd like to and, and I try to keep it uh, pretty low key there. And of course, um, don't forget, you know, I want to, again, a big shout out to my Patreon supporters. I've got a few, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart, really. It is, I'm just so blessed to have some people that feel that they want to support me somehow through Patreon. And you can do that by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash EV Revolution Show and check it out there if you feel like you want to. But again, love you to subscribe to YouTube and, and keep in contact. Continue to send me ideas. And I, I read all the comments, by the way, folks, on YouTube. I try to respond to as many as I can with my with the day the time the the time that I have during the days because I'm a very busy guy with my real full time job, and some traveling that I do, but I do try to get back to you. So I appreciate an awful lot, and I'll continue to try to do relevant com, uh, 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 content for you, and hopefully you continue to enjoy that. Beautiful. So again, Chris, thank you very yeah, much. It's cool, been a pleasure and, uh, to meet I you. Am, I'm a one take kind uh, of for you guy, to help so. co-host the show. <laughs> I hope roll, this man. Was exciting, the, folks. A little different than just me standing I, in front of a green when, screen. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. And until next time, take care, and we'll see you later. Uh -huh.